Oh, there. We're off for another adventure. I'm going to visit Pit and Ween. It's in the East Nuke of Fife. And it's an absolutely lovely place. I mean, the East Nuke of Fife is, is full of um, small coastal villages. Most have a harbour and uh, a collection of old cottages with the red pan tiles and the facades and a whole host of different colours. It's, it's, I just love, love the place. Love it. Um, Pit, Pit and Weems on the, the Fife Coastal Path and that's what we're on just now. Um, I, I'm walking from St Monin's and it's only about a mile and a half, so it's just a half hour walk. Um, and on, on the other side of Putin Weem, if you were to go a little further, you could carry on to Anstruther, or Einster, or however you might want to pronounce it. And it's only a mile. So you can do lots of small sections of the Fife Coastal Path. Or you can do big sections, or you can do the whole thing which would take you quite a number of days. We just passed the old windmill at St Monin's there. I understand that you can maybe get the key from somewhere and go in and have a look inside. But I have to tell you, it's an absolutely lovely day. The sun's out, there's a slight kind of blue, misty haze that's slowly disappearing. And um, not too far in the distance, I can see Pit and Ween. I have to tell you, there's a lot of little flies here. Getting up to all sorts of tricks like bouncing off my forehead and things. But anyway, as, as I think you can see, I mean, these houses are just, just beautiful. Now, I mean, I came here quite a few years ago and I think one of the things that struck me about these houses and the very thick wall right in front of them, it, it was almost as if they stood here defiantly against the ocean. Occasionally crying out to the roaring waves, you shall not pass. Hello oh, there. I'm trying to get enough wee flies together for an omelette. <laughs> Hello there. Nice morning. Beautiful. Beautiful. The flies are enjoying it. Yes. <laughs> I think as I perhaps said, um, Pit and Weem is without question uh, my favourite little coastal place 
in the East Nuke of Fife. It's hard to say why. Everybody will have their own particular favourites. Because most of the places in Fife Sea Snook are just, you know, they've all got a harbour. Um, they'll all have lovely houses. I mean, the harbour at Creil, for example, is just, my goodness, that's a beauty. A beauty. But for some reason, I, I, I prefer Pit and Weem. I don't know whether it's just more pleasing to my eye or what, but um, there's just no doubt that that is the case. I'm not sure if you'll pick a lot of this up because the sun's, the sun's in the wrong place. But let's carry on exploring. I suppose another of the things that attracted me to Pit and Weem was the fact that the harbour still works. It's still a working harbour. Still got boats, still got nets and boys and men that go out fishing for things. Some of the other harbours do as well, but I, I think it's probably, I think it happens to a, a larger extent in Pit and Weem. And I, I don't know why, but I, I just love wandering around harbours. You do, of course, have to be careful because, um, you know, a moment's inattentiveness could see you toppling over the edge into the water. Then you would be in trouble. So, you know, for goodness sake, if you choose to come down here, just have your wits about you. It could be slippy. Any number of hazards, just be careful. Well, we're near the end of the, the harbour wall, uh, but I'm not going to go right to the end because although the sea's quite quiet, but I'll leave that bit out. Um, I have to say the harbour is just, it's old and oozing charm. It's, um, it's, it's just stunningly attractive. If you look uh, closely at, uh, at the, I was going to say cobbles, it's not cobbles, it's, it's just huge stones that make up the harbour. Um, and, and there's uh, there's numbers carved in some of them. Um, I, don't, I don't know what they are. I, I would maybe guess them maybe for, um, you know, pointing out a particular ship's birth point or something. I don't know. That could be nonsense. But um, as you can see from here, you know, you're getting a good view back at the uh, pit and wheel. But when you come along that old harbour, as well as oozing atmosphere, it's oozing kind of green moss. It's very slippy, so just watch your, your footing. But it's, it is worth coming along here. I mean, you know, it just doesn't get better than that. I don't know what that big stone is. I don't think it would have been used to tie ships up because there isn't really any rope marks on it. So many questions, so few answers. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Um, is that a stone thing? 
I mean, the obvious thought is that they were used to tie ships up, but as I say, I don't really see any... I don't really see any uh, rope marks. There's some of these numbers there, look. Don't know what they were. More questions. And there's more of them. There's a looks like looks like a 19 and a 20. I find this small collection of buildings here uh, just particularly attractive because they're such a, a jumble of different shapes and sizes. But as I say, it's time to go in search of a cave. So let's see if we can find a key. And we'll go there. Okay, we're going up a little lane here and that yellow doorway with the cross in the middle is the entrance to St Philan's Cave. Now I've never been in that cave and from what I understand all you have to do is go into either, let, let, in fact let me have a look at this notice here, you can either Uh, you can get a key from either the Little Gallery, 20 High Street, or the Cocoa Tree Shop at 9 High Street. So, I don't know whether it will be open at this time of year, but let's see. Let's go up and find out. So the High Street's up this way. Called the High Street, so it's bound to be high. I look at it. <laughs> um, to be honest, the prospect of getting the key and having a look in there is actually quite exciting. It takes a lot to get an old guy like me excited, but you only have to say the word cave and I'm jumping up and down and what have you. Lovely old church. That's another thing I love about different um, places in Scotland. That, the sheer variety of uh, church, well church, uh, steeple or spire or it's like a bell tower, but the sheer variety of designs, um, uh, quite amazing. sensing as if in some mystical magical way that this is the high street here well I'll be damned and it is too okay now one of the places mentioned there was the cocoa tree it's a cafe so you could work you could go in here get some soup and the key to the cave I mean you know so let's let's do that okay I've, I've got the key I'll show you by way of proof there's a key there so I'm going to attach to that bit of wood and they give you a leaflet as well so it is with some considerable level of excitement and bubbles of anticipation that we're going into St. Philan's Cave. Wow. I 
I could maybe open up and then if anybody else turns up, I could charge them admission. <laughs> Actually, you do, you do pay a pound to get the key, but... Uh, Hello. Lovely smell of wood smoke. Right, hold on. Carrying too many things here. Oh, no, we've done it, we're in, we're in. Now, when I planned to come here, what I thought to do was bring a torch. Now, I have forgotten a torch. Oh, fact, well, there's lights. Oh, there's light switches, right? There we go. Okay, a slight downhill bit here. I'm not definitely in a cave. And there is more information there about St. Philan. So in addition to your, your leaflet, you've got information there. Oh, watch your head. So I think as you can maybe see instantly, it's actually quite a, it's quite a small cave. There's uh, a bit there that's got an altar, and there's a bit there which goes in a wee bit, but it, it doesn't go in very far. I'm reluctant to go in, I'll go in a wee bit, because the roof is, um, the roof of the cave's quite low. Yeah. The one thing that sandstone is good for, and I think these are sandstone caves, scraping bits of skin off your forehead. Um, oh well, so that was that was St. Philan's Cave. Um, to be honest, I didn't expect much more than that, but I'm just delighted to have uh, delighted to have uh, seen inside it. I can see the sunlight coming in through the doorway. I may actually switch the lights off and see if I can get a photograph with the sunlight coming in. And the thing to remember is to turn the lights off when you leave and to lock the door and also perhaps to make sure nobody sneaked in while you've been inside so that you don't lock anybody in. But we're a the key. That's the, the key to the cave returned back in the Cocoa Tree Cafe. Let's have a, just have a quick look at the, the church and then we'll wander around. Sorry, we'll wander down the high street here and see what's going on in, in the high street. just can't beat a squeaky gate. Often when I visit places, I, I like to come to the, the oldest church in the graveyard that's generally attached and have a look around because um, you can often get a very good flavour 
of what a town's really all about. I'm not going to have a look at any of the headstones, but often you will see inscriptions giving details of industries or trades that men had, and you can, as I say, get a, a good hint for um, of what a town was all about. I'm hoping we'll get a good view over here. That's just the way that we come up the lane with a cave down there. I forgot to point out, but in the cave there was there was some steps leading up to a, a, a blocked bit that I think may have um, led to a, a garden at one time or other. I don't know why I'm thinking of the phrase pleasure garden. Probably because that's what I've read. Don't know what's that pleasure you can get in a garden. Growing nice roses, perhaps. Anyway, that's the church. Beautiful church there. So as I say, we'll go back down the high street and see what that has to offer. Just coming up to the cocoa tea shop and cafe. Lovely smells in there. Definitely worth a look. And as I say, you can get the key to the cave in there. And there's another coffee house. And I'm hoping you can see that seriously attractive old uh, building on the right there. I have not got a clue what it is. I just want to look back at that tall uh, building. Rather attractive looking thing. So we've just come further down the high street there. And there's a number of lanes leading off it. Leading in the general direction of the harbour. I'm seeing a number of lanes here. I feel spoilt, spoilt for choice. Um, tell you what, let's just go down here. I don't know where this goes. I was just saying to the chap in the Cocoa Tree Cafe there that while there's not a great deal in St. Fillan's Cave, uh, the excitement of having to go and get the key and open it up yourself and close it and what have you. It, it, it's, it's, part, it's part of the whole experience. I, I, I almost hate using the experience word, but um, it, it, that I think is the case. You'll not be seeing anything here because the sun's, I'm getting blinded by the sun. Uh, I don't know where this goes. Where's this going? I mean, when I was having a look at the cave, I kind of closed the gate behind me and um, there were some other visitors milling around and I could quite easily have said, do you want to come in and have a look? But uh, to be honest, I think it would have spoilt it for them. Because the excitement is in having to go and get the key yourself. Although, as I has also said, I should perhaps have started, I should have stood at the entrance for a while and charged folk a five at a time. <laughs> that, would, that would have worked. OK, so this is just taking us down to the harbour. So let's go back up again. Because there was another lane I wanted to go down. The place is festooned with lanes. 
This was the lane I spotted. Where does this go? I would be guessing if I said it probably leads back, back down to the harbour. I think they all lead to the harbour. Just as I thought, we're back where we started. Do you remember all that? So as I say, that's us back roughly where we started. Um, there are these stout buildings, just at the water's edge. Um, and that's essentially putting the wheel. Except for one more thing. And I haven't found it yet. So here we are. A small public house just at the end of South Lone. I'm going in here for a small beer. Wet my whistle. And brush dead flies from my ears. <laughs> I'm Eddie Burns. That was Pet and Weem. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you again.